Hi everyone. How are you all? I think you were all waiting for this nice encounter and um, conversation. So I don't need to introduce this amazing person, Alex Collier. Thank you so much for accepting to join me for this this chat and exchange. So, uh, Alex, how are you? I am good. Uh, BN. I am BN. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me on, on your program and, uh, you know, have the opportunity to, to talk to your your fans, your your people. And uh, <laughs> it, it's an honor for me. It, it really is. Thank you. Well, the honor is for me as well. Um, and uh, dear, dear colleague, colleague emissary. <laughs> Bushwhacker. No, <laughs> no, Bushwhacker. Chopping through the weeds, you know. <laughs> Trying to Just, find our ship in the jungle so we can go home. I know. Well, everybody, everybody's going to be uh, jealous when I'm going to just say that just before starting this uh, this live, we are just chatting about the things we've been drinking or eating upstairs and comparing our experience, and that was uh, was funny. But we're not going to talk about this tonight. Um, <laughs> tonight, well, I am. Um, First, I am very happy to connect with you because we both have had um, the same information given by different people, um, you by the Andromedan Council and uh, myself from people uh, from the Galactic Federation and all these people are working together with Earth, with all what is happening on the moment. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you to help me pass this message about human sovereignty, who are we, why is it so important to be aware how powerful we are and to request assistance as equal beings with all the benev our benevolent allies. Um, I, I've been receiving these messages for, for a short while now, and Thorhan, my, my rescuer and, uh, and contact, always tell, says to me, tell them that they need to know that they are so powerful, that they are interdimensional beings, and that they need to realize this tell them that they need to consider themselves as equal with us, that there's nobody above anyone. And they, 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 they invite humans of Earth to stand up on their feet, to realize that they have the power to say no to fears and to look at the sky and speak as equal and request assistance, not as uh, as requesting assistance uh, practically because all these benevolent allies are already assisting us from a very long time. But the simple fact of requesting, it's the intention that liberates us from slavery. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would like to invite you to tell your your insights about that if possible mm -hmm. please <laughs> you know the a's hi everyone I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to start at the beginning um, I, let's just pick up where we are today because there's so much to talk about now the a's uh, the Andromedans from the Zenithay system, who are fifth dimensional beings. It's interesting that your group are from the Pleiades, their fifth dimensional group. The impact of what happens on Earth uh, really seems to impact 
the fifth dimension profoundly, which is why a great deal of assistance has come from the fifth dimension here to the third. And along that way, they have been recruiting fourth dimension uh, assistance as well. Now, the A's have always talked about creating a domain of knowing. And essentially what that is, is that people's longing, the idea of prayer, the idea of silent meditation, the, the uh, idea of asking, just the simple um, movement of asking for what you want creates a field of intention, of energy. And as that grows, what happens is it draws to it that which is asked for. For example, humanity has had to live under monarchies for thousands of years. Humanity was treated as property for thousands of years. And eventually what happened, what came out of this domain of knowing is the Magna Carta. That was really the first piece. Now you would have thought it was the, the Hamadi uh, Treaty, but it wasn't. It didn't actually get enough traction. But Magna Carta did in fact work in England. The English, once they went outside England, they, they kept doing what they were doing. But eventually what happened was the United States of America came into being. The Constitution of the United States, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. Now, those documents have held. They have grounded the idea of sovereignty, individual liberties, that no government has a right to rescind. Unalienable rights belong to the human, to the human people, the human species. In pulling that down, in manifesting that physically, what then has to happen is we have to empower ourselves with those principles. And what that means is you practice them, you live them, and that you demand that those principles be honored. Now, this is why here in the States, the, the Constitution says we the people. That's because we, the collective, decided that we were going to establish a government. And what we did was we first establish the states. The states then collectively, along on the behest of the people, created a federal government. Now, the, the people of the world, and it doesn't matter which kind of, what kind of a government you have, the people of the world, we need to look at ourselves as CEOs of, of the world. And, and what I mean by that is the governments of this planet truly are corporations. That's all they are. And like with any corporation, they only exist because of the people. There would be no reason to have a corporation if there was no product, nothing to sell, uh, nothing anybody was interested in, or there was actually no energy whatsoever being directed in their way or towards them. So, in essence, we, the people of this planet, that's the coffee pot, <laughs> um, we are the source of the power. We genuinely are. We make things work. We're the ones who build things. We're the ones who give the power to the media, to the government, to the school systems, to our local governments. They only exist because we give them our power. Now, you could also say we give our power away. This would be appropriate as well. Yep. Humanity has been doing that 
for a very, very long time. And there are literally no more excuses for that because as things are coming out uh, and more and more information uh, is, is becoming clear and becoming public, we all know on a real basic level that virtually the entire establishment of government on this planet has been corrupted. Now, there may be some really good people in it, but they're in a system that's absolutely deplorable. They're in a system where blackmail, murder, kidnapping, every unimaginable horrible thing has been done to control and to clamp down power. Some of that has been done by bloodlines, human, half human, half hybrid bloodlines. The larger portion of it has to do with off-worlders who have been hiding and working and living behind the scenes, basically interacting and manipulating humanity for their own pleasure. If you're paying attention, then you know that what's happened is that now that we are beginning to wake up and they're losing control of our minds and our emotional bodies, what's happening now is they, they have decided, well, in order for us to remain in power, we have to do something drastic. We have to initiate Agenda 21. Agenda 2030, we have to depopulate the planet and we will choose who those people are that get to stay. And they will be those that we know we can manipulate and we can control. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean they're, they're telling you this literally. They're, they're yeah. literally telling you this. And the United Nations passed all this bullshit in the 90s, uh, 68 until 1997. They passed all these programs to depopulate. And they've even laid out how they were going to do it. Starvation, war, pestilence, uh, biological weapons, um, viruses, and and you're seeing it. It's all playing itself out. They've, they've thrown everything out there to make this work. Now, what this has done is this has forced humanity <laughs> To have to take a look at itself and of course that always begins on an individual level we all have to look at ourselves first and that's the hardest thing to live the hardest thing to do because we're not objective with ourselves but the reality is you're a soul in a human body now that soul is not only unique but it has an experience and knowledge that exceeds any known date that mankind could come up with. You know, I could say you're all eternal, that your souls are eternal, but let's just put a number to it. Let's just say it this way. You, the knowledge that you have goes all the way back to the absolute creation of this universe. It may go back even further, but let's just give you that. Let's just say that the knowledge and the experience you have goes back to the, the beginning of this universe. I'm not talking the solar system. I am talking about the entire holograph, all the dimensions up to now 12. <clears throat> you have that in you. That information is now contained in your DNA because when you come in and you attach to a physical body, you lay your template over the physical form, which is why in Switzerland, the Blue Brain Project, if you've researched this, they have taken several different types of technology and put them together and they have mapped the brain. And one of the most incredible things that they have discovered is that in our brain, and it's not every single person, everyone's different and unique, but what they have discovered in all of the test subjects that they've done 
is that they all have multi-dimensional structures in their brain. Some are five, some are seven, nine, ten, up to eleven. Now, that has to do with the soul. That has nothing to do with our DNA because otherwise we'd all be the same. And we're not. So you're here for whatever your reason is. And what's happening is that the earth has this, the earth herself has made a decision to jump octaves, to jump a dimension or two. And she's going to do it. We have to decide, are we going to go with the program or not? Are we going to step up? Are we going to empower ourselves to not only make the effort to know who we are, but to ask source, creator, God, whatever word or noun you use to identify that, that essence? to give you the guidance and the knowledge that you need. Yeah. Now, if you don't know that, then how can you possibly ask for what you want? So it's imperative that you know what it is you want. And it isn't the words, it's the intention. Okay, it's, it. it's what's here that you're like, that you're asking for, that that you're sending to the source to to all that is now i know this is incredible for a lot of new people and young people yeah. but your intention your prayers are heard and i'm i'm going to give you this story it's an absolutely true story just so you know that what you say and what you think is being heard. Um, I have a family member who passed away. He worked on the Alaskan pipeline in Alaska. And he was he, he was a he was a tough guy, my uncle Dick. And he was not a a religious person or spiritual person at all. He was dying from tuberculosis, and the last few weeks of his life, he was at home with my aunt, my aunt Jean, and he would have these blackouts. And then the paramedics would come, and they would check him, and sometimes they would take him to the hospital, and then he'd come back. But he he was at the end of his cycle here. He was cycling out. One particular uh, time, he blacked out just about two weeks before he passed away, and he went to a park he said he went through this light and he went to this park gorgeous big trees and his oldest sister my aunt connie was there my mother who had died in 64 uh, by a drunk driver was there and they talked and he felt like he had been there for hours the blackout i think only lasted 15 to 20 minutes but where he was it was hours and they were talking to him etc and my Aunt Connie and my mother told him that when he came back to let us know that they hear us pray, they hear us talk about them, that they, um, my mother in particular, uh, said that, you know, that I'm very proud of them. And um, I, I hear every time they talk or, or that, that they pray to me. But she said, it's just too hard for me to come and try to reach you myself. Um, my Aunt Connie basically said the same thing in her own unique way. Anyway, my Uncle Dick comes back. He comes out of his blackout. And apparently he was a very changed man. Very changed man. He had had an epiphany. There is life after death. There is something more. It isn't one and done. The family of humanity is far bigger than 
any of us can possibly imagine. And it expands beyond dimensions. And I know for a lot of people that's hard to, to, to get because you're so used to this, this density, this fish tank that we've all been living in, which we call third density. And it's a very, very tough school. There is no doubt about it. You know, it is not for weaklings <laughs> or for the yeah. squeamish. Third density of earth is, is a real tough detail. Absolutely. Yeah. So once you come to terms with that, once you actually grasp the fact that you are more than just the physical body, you can begin the process of expanding your field and reaching out with your intention, with your heart, with your emotions to that which you do not see. Just be clear about what it is you want. You have to be clear about what it is you want. And you're not going to be given anything you can't deal with. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have a lot of help here, folks. But like e Elena was saying, we have to ask. You see, they're, they're, they know the situation we're in. This group of, of regressives that have been here manipulating behind the scenes, they're very familiar with these, this bunch. They have been around. They have been in other star systems, mucking up everything. But if we ask, if we ask, we are empowering ourselves. We are telling them, hey, we know we need help, but we're coming to you as an equal. And we're not asking you to save us, per se, but we're asking you for help, guidance, and any knowledge you have that would help us figure out this mess and put humanity back on a path to where we can actually realize our full potential and promise. And, you know, we're, we're, the fork in the road is literally right in front of us. There is no more gray. You know, it used to be black and white, the extremes, and then the middle was gray. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not sure I have to tell most of you this. There's no more gray. It's one or the other. And that's by design. It's designed by the frequency. It's designed by the universe, uh, by the frequencies coming from, from the suns, the central stars, from other dimensions, the Schumann resonance. All of those things are key in showing us that there is a genuine physical component to this movement of spirit because they're actually one and the same. I mean, it all starts in spirit and then it comes down into the physical. So if we can embrace the idea that, okay, what I want is already here and you keep calling it, you keep seeing it, you will pull it to you. And, and, and I know this is not new knowledge. This, this, this knowledge has been around forever. It's just that they have done, the powers that be have done their best to make sure that humanity remain disempowered and that only they, the powers that be, would have the answers and the information. And I've got news for you. They don't know shit. They really don't. They have screwed this up so bad that that's why all this other help has had to come in here because they've mucked it up completely. Yeah. Jump in anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I would listen to Please, you for hours. <laughs> no, that's why I, what I was saying to you that just uh, correspond to what I was just saying to you before we started this, that when uh, Thorhan Mariskewer and his team came back, came back after uh, many years of absence uh, in 2018. They were excited. They were saying, we're coming back because something extraordinary is going to happen for this planet. And they were hopeful, they were positive, and they were looking for it. So that is something important because 
um, as you were saying to me, uh, they they know the future. They know how it's going to be, but how it is going to be, it is. It depends on what we are doing now. Yeah. What we are doing now, if we we keep on doing our awakening uh, as good soldiers, that's going to happen. It's just if some t suddenly we decide to uh step back and say finally i decide to 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 be to have uh, to be scared and do and be you know and uh or oh, I'll, I'll stay like this and finally no but that that's not gonna happen so we need to keep on be brave um taking responsibility refuse to be manipulated refuse anything that's mm. induced by fear Fear is the, the, the mind control. And I totally agree uh, when you say that they don't know anything about uh, the, 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 what we know because they, they don't have access. They don't have the same structure of soul. Don't you agree with that? They, they can't access to the same I, thing? I think in some cases that's true. But, in, but what happened was is that they put themselves into, and I'm going to use the term matrix, yeah. into a, a, a bubble of thought that basically is a cycle. Yeah. There is no real freedom to explore, to step outside the boundaries because they, were, they are controlled and they are managed by beings who think holographically. And I'm talking about the off-worlders. Yeah. So in order to keep them in control, they kept them in a, in a cyclical type of thought pattern over and over and over again. And that cyclical cycle, that cycle is one of control, manipulation, domination, and um, that's pretty much it. And, and yeah. fear, okay? Creating uh, a degree of fear everywhere. Because when you're in fear, you tend to you tend to not express how you really feel. What you do is you withdraw into yourself. And then what happens is, is that at some point, what you see or what you begin to think is about, okay, I'm, now I'm a physical being. Okay, I'm afraid for my physical life when that that's that's going to go away anyway at some point and you were never that you're never this you know yes most of, have had thousands of lifetimes literally thousands of lifetimes and up until 654 a.d you know reincarnation was in the bible the vatican took it out because they i think it was pope gregory he took it out because he couldn't get anyone to be serious enough about um, uh, hell and, um, and being sinners because everybody realized or had this belief system that they knew to be true within themselves that, well, you know, if I don't get it right this time, I will come back and I'll have another lifetime and I can do better. They couldn't create enough fear. So they took it out and several generations later, no one remembered reincarnation so they didn't realize hey you know i'm a soul instead it was i was born of sin i am of sin i'm a sinner even though you were you're three hours old i mean they, no they wanted to and, control people by fear yes and that that's basically the weapon of choice and as long as they can convince us that we have a reason to be afraid it works That has to stop because it's nonsense. Um, you know, moms, you know, when, when you have concerns and fears for your children and their safety, but if someone screws with your kids, what happens? Mama bear shows up. And mama bear is like not to be messed with. And, you know, all the fear goes away, all of that. You know, apprehension, it's just like, and then you come out, you know, and everybody's just like, oh, my God, 
you know, and, the, and everybody gets out of your way. We all have to be that way about our lives now because they're screwing with us big time. I mean, and, and I do this on my webinars and I've talked about this, whatever the Corona thing is, whatever that is, really is. And I'm not gonna say because I don't wanna get Elena kicked off of YouTube because I've already, I've already had trouble with that. <laughs> but let me just say it this way, okay? I don't think I'll get into trouble with this. Um, you have a, 90, a, 95, a 98% chance of survival of this thing, even if you have. So that 2%, that 2% of a risk has created so much fear in people that they have shut down their businesses, they have shut down their lives, they have not seen their families, they haven't hugged their families, they don't go to gatherings, they haven't gone to church, and we've allowed this. Now, how many of you live in LA? You know what the odds are of getting home every night on the LA freeways? I think it's like in the high 80 percentile. So you have a better chance with this than driving the freeways in Los Angeles. And yet, look what they've tried to do to the entire world. And they have done. They've been incredibly successful with this, this scare, this fear mongering that they've done. And, um, you know, just for the record, John Hopkins, Stanford University, University of Washington, the CDC, not one single one of them actually has been able to isolate COVID-19 virus. Hmm. And they admit this. They admit this. They haven't even been able to isolate it. So how do they know there's other strands? They yeah. can't isolate it. They're making this shit up. I know. Yeah. Making this Sorry. shit up. Because Sorry. on some level, they are aware that humanity is sh shrugging off the shackles that humanity is beginning to take a really hard look at everything that's been going on, and they realize that humanity really isn't stupid. We're yeah. really not. And the minute we figure this out, then we're all mama bears. All of us, mama bears and grizzlies. And they're, they're in a world of hurt at that point. And they know it's coming because another domain of knowing is being created and that is global sovereignty. That is freedom for humanity. And humanity wants to be able to call its own shots, not have these bureaucratic knuckleheads telling everyone what to do. Oh, yeah. People they use, haven't got it right uh, at all. They've never gotten it right. So why would we continue to entrust it? And, um, you know, I think it's important to note that. The decisions that you make regarding your your health, the medical community, vaccines, you obviously have free will. And you should always exercise your free will and you should be empowered by your free will. But be sure that you have done the research yourself and not gotten the information from CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, okay? Just don't take their word for it. Do the research yourself. More importantly, listen to what real doctors are saying about all this. Because real doctors know, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but 98% of real doctors, they never vaccinate their kids. <laughs> They yeah, believe that. Why would you put poison in your body to protect mm. you from a poison? I know. I, I right. mean, it's common yeah. sense. Absolutely. It really is. Um, yeah. But a lot of amazing things are happening. They really are. Aside from humanity looking at this 
this um, global scenario, this this show, or what appears to be a show, I have expressed frustration over um, humanity waiting and waiting and waiting for someone else to do something. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I don't think hope is a real strategy, frankly. And I think that there, there has, there is coming, we're coming to a point where, you know, we, the people have to be absolutely clear about what it is we want and we have to ask for it. And, and what I mean by ask for it is we go to our local, local and our local and uh, national governments and we tell them what we want. We don't let them tell us what we're going to do. We tell them what we want. Yeah. We're the ones who are the power here. In England, there's what? Yeah, 68 we... million of you and there's 5 million bureaucrats who clearly don't have a clue. Why would you be listening to them? Here in the United States, it's the exact same scenario. It's 318 million of us, plus another 100,000 illegals who came in just last month. So that number keeps going up. And they're not here to be slaves. They're really not. Most of them want a better life, and you can't fault anybody for that. But we all want a better life. So let's create a better life. Let's not let these institutions that have just mucked everything up remain in power. It's insane. It's insane. It's crazy. Keep doing the same thing over again and expect a different result. You know, that's the definition of insanity. Yes, and, the, and you know, we're not insane. I know. These these other this other group here who wants the power, wants the control, they're the ones who are insane. Yeah, and they are the ones who fear us. They are the ones who who know Probably. how how powerful we are in many levels and many domains, and that's why they want to shut us down. They want to they control us by fear, making us believe we are nothing and we have no power and we have no power of decision. If they were these ones, who if, if they were so powerful use fear tactics and confusion and manipulation they would just get the job done but no they don't because they know we have free will so they want to they try to get us to agree to be manipulated to agree to be to be made as slaves that's that's what's going on that's what they're doing they've always done they, they you know well you know <laughs> it's uh no, they don't they do that everywhere the uh, the level of manipulation is is profound. They disempower us uh, in so many different ways uh, by destroying families, uh, by destroying God, by taking God away from us, um, poisoning the food uh, in, in uh, the medical community. You know. Humanity, civilized humanity as we knew ourselves, you know, goes back 40, 43, 45,000 years, maybe even further. Um, let's just look at India, the people of India. You know, they've had Ayurvedic medicine for 25,000 years. They've known the natural healing properties of, of nature. The indigenous people in almost every country knew the same knowledge. And then all of a sudden, we let a group, a, a corporation run by the Rockefellers, come in and throw all that away and say, okay, we're going to do it this way. End of story. And we're going to outlaw everything that you knew before. We're going to make it illegal. Okay. Now, I wasn't alive back in 22, 25 when all this happened. But if I had been, I would be like, well, well what are you, why are we doing this? We know this works. There are thousands and thousands of years of knowledge and results. And we're going to throw that all the way, all the way, 
to start doing something that's synthetic. And that's all it is. And look at where it's gotten us now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just, yeah. our apathy has brought us to this point. And it's the apathy of humanity, not just our generation, but many, many generations before us. The apathy to, to in order to, to get along, we had to go along. Even when we knew um, intuitively that it was a terrible idea or a bad decision. Uh, we need to unconditionally be responsible for ourselves without being coerced by some higher authority. Yes, yes. You said something I, because I am... Um... I followed your webinar, your last one on, on last Friday, and you say something that I, I wrote down and I found very pro profound and simple. Uh, you said, together we are human beings, divided we turn into slaves. I found yeah. that, that's it. Yeah, well, you know, you fractionalize anything and it's not strong. It's splintered into different groups. And then what you do is you infiltrate all the individual groups and you give them a different thought, a different idea, or you you manipulate them in such a way that they turn on the other groups. And they've been doing this to humanity, you know, since the Anunnaki were here. Um, you know, it was the Anunnaki who separated the, the races of man. It was the Anunnaki who changed the languages of, of, of mankind. At one time, we all spoke a, the same language more than likely Sumerian or Tamil, the Tamil language. We all spoke the same language, but they divided us. And then they changed the languages. Then they changed the cultures. They introduced different types of worship, different types of food. Then what they did in order to solve their own squabbles with each other, they used humanity as a military to fight other groups of humanity and, it, and it, it didn't matter because they themselves were never harmed. It was always humanity. So, and ultimately what happened was they left all of humanity with this heartbreak warfare. You know, hearts are broken everywhere. Uh, generations are killed on a battlefield over nothing, something that wasn't even real, but because they were told or they were, convinced that this had to happen. Meanwhile, those who initiate all of this strife, they themselves never are held to account, ever. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's what they, they, they always do, these, these regressive, as, as we call it. They, they just use local primitive populations that eventually breed to enhance them as super worker or super soldiers but they they, they never uh do the job themselves they just they, they still keep on doing this with 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 humanity all these abduction hybridization programs that they're running to create a super race to go and fight somewhere else and you know that that that's still still going on well touching in a, an end here as i believe but uh, that's still the tactic, and they've done that everywhere. So, so many worlds, so many worlds. Um, they, 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 they use ignorance. People don't know, and it's always repeat the same story, um, the same ta tactic. And uh, that, yeah. Now, we start to know that's, now. That's the level of of their. Um, that's the level of their control mechanism or matrix, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the minute that we begin to wake up, their fail set, because they really don't have uh, anything beyond what they've already thrown at us. So ultimately, the last straw for them is to genocide the race, yeah. is to take most of them away and just keep those that they know are docile and they can control or, or specific bloodlines. They always need the slaves. Yeah. So, but the rest of us, we're, well, we're troublemakers. We're yeah. the troublemakers. So they're gonna remove us from the equation. 
So that's their fail safe. They are at, this is end game for them, for the dark side. This is the end game. This is their last play is to try to genocide, depopulate the planet by 90%. Yes, it's a cutting. So yeah. Now that you know this, now that we all know this, what are we going to do? That's it. That's it. You have no choice but to stand up for yourself. That's it. No yeah. way back. No way back. Because now we had, we are this switching point. We are just, we just stand up, or I, I'm going. I'm going to use a French expression or. <laughs> Or oh, bend over, you know what I mean. <laughs> we can stand up. We need to stand up. That's no choice. Well, we have the choice, but the good choice is to stand up and say, hey, wait a minute. I have my word to say. It's my body. It's my life. It's my soul. It's my people. It's my planet. And go away. Leave me alone. Leave us alone. Now that's over, you know. And we need to realize that we, we we must not fear them. It's them who fear us because if if we don't know how powerful we are, they know. They know. So, yeah, they do know. They yeah. do know. You know, they've always known. That's why they kept such a clamp down on us. You know, that's why they kept us running around in circles on a hamster wheel. So we would be too busy uh, spinning around trying to survive that we wouldn't stop and figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah. Um, sometimes explain this. I, I am maybe a Mediter my Mediterranean uh, side with my hands. That that that's the the level of lock locking us down. That's like kind of a veil of a matrix. And we are you used as well this tumble down thing. And they 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 they, they maintain us. But what is awakening? It's just creating holes in this, and just and we will. Oh, see we. Now we see a different perspective, and that's they don't want that because once we above it, we're out of this. They've lost. They just need. They just have to pack up and. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, ultimately they're responsible for us waking up. Yeah. Uh, because they got so heavy-handed, they got so diabolical, you know, they got so uh, uh, twisted that. It's literally forcing us now out, you know, out of this matrix, out of this this dream that we've all been living in. And now we're questioning everything. And, you know, seems like 100 years ago. But in the 90s, there were a couple of us talking about the kids. Yeah. Now it's becoming front and center. Yeah. And the people involved in this are the same people you're going to find that have been running our governments, our corporations, our banking systems. And it doesn't matter whether they were blackmailed. It, none of that matters. The fact of the matter is they did it. Yeah. They did it. And now that that's becoming front and center, you know, humanity, we have to look at this and say, whoa, there's no way. There's no way this can be allowed to continue. There's no way we can ever in any way condone what's what's been done to humanity and the kids. And this is only going to keep growing, even if they get rid of 90% of us. They're just going to, they're going to be more emboldened to continue to do this to, um, you know, the children and the adults that are left behind. And you know that they're going to be very specific in, in who they want because they're, you know, at half a million, they need breeders. They need women to breed more children for the purposes of, of more labor, but also for the other things that yeah, we know are yeah, going on. That we know of. We, we have to put an end to this. Um, I know that, or I'm aware that there's all these things going on underground, that militaries around the world, mm -hmm. you know, but ultimately the largest force is us. Yeah. We're the largest military force 
the planet's ever known. It's we the people. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm not saying we march with guns. I'm not saying anything. But what I am saying is that we have to stand up for ourselves. We have to we have to take a position of leadership, not only in our community, but with our local governments, our state governments, and the federal government. Because here in the United States, it is estimated that 90% of the people that work for government uh, will no longer be working for government when all this comes out. They're gone. They're going to be prosecuted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, well, who's going to step up? Who is going to play? Who's going to fill those roles or take up the role, the position of leaders in this country? It has to be us because it's always been us. But now that we're awake, now that we're aware of the mistakes made in the past, we have to be clear that we don't make those mistakes again because you know, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are on this planet, your all your governments are going to go through very similar things. Most of them have been bought and paid for. The finest governments money can buy. We all have it. We all have them. You are forefathers and foremothers in your countries. You are. That's the role that you're playing now. For future generations, you are the forefathers and the foremothers, just like our ancestors were. Now that role has fallen to us, and we have an obligation to not only do everything we can to steer the ship on the right path, but to make sure that we institute um, righteousness, uh, true justice, uh, equal rights, and and this shouldn't be a country thing. This should be a world thing. This should be a global thing because humanity is a family. It doesn't matter the color of our skin. It doesn't matter the language. It doesn't matter where you grew up or how you grew up or what your faith is. That's all bullshit. That's all separation, you know, the reality is there. we are the largest group of consciousness on this planet. And we've been acting like idiots. Yeah. We have been giving our power away. We have been, to use a French term, bending over. Okay. <laughs> we have been doing all these things. All right. And, and we have to stop this. It's not working for us. And it isn't going to work for future generations whatsoever because they have all they are already telling us the powers that be or were that their goal is to eliminate 90% of the world's population. Yeah. And, and I know I'm on the list. You know, and, and a majority of you are also on the list yeah. because you can think of yourselves. And that's yeah. that's not what they want. They they want, you know, they want the puppets. But the panicking. Know, Huh? They're panicking. They are panicking because they they are trying to push their agendas. I believe uh, as much as as they can, and it, it, I think they, they they don't try to hide anymore as much as they they were trying to hide, working on hiding before. It becomes so openly and obvious that people just are are becoming aware of what's happening more and more. I I. I I just believe that that they they're just panicking. Yeah. What do you think? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good people stuck in a really bad system, and those yeah. systems are worldwide on every level. Yeah. Um, they're there because they they continue to try to do good. They try to do what's right. They're there because they have a family to support. It's a really yeah. tough spot. It's a yeah. really tough spot for everyone. Uh, to try to figure out how to make this all work and, and to make this transition because humanity is, I don't know that we've ever had to make a transition like this before where we literally are changing 
the entire economic system almost overnight of the planet, the currency system of the planet almost overnight, the um, governmental structure going from admiralty law or socialism, communism, um, monarchies to, to a common law type of judicial system, uh, government system. I mean, you know, virtually every attorney on this planet is going to have to go to school to learn, back to school to learn about common law because they're not taught it anymore. And, but, you know, again, we, the people, we have to know what the common law is. We need to be right there as well. Even though we're not attorneys, we have to be just as educated so that we know when they step out of line that we can correct them or we can say, look, you know, you stay inside the line. We can color outside the line, but you can't because you're the law. You have to color inside the line. And, mm -hmm. and that's it. And whatever lies we've been told, whatever lies are still to come, whatever lies that we've been told about our history, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we have absolutely no choice but to rise above the lies and keep moving forward and continue to try to figure out how to get things back on course. Yes, and it's us who will do it. Nobody else will do it for us. No, yeah. I, I mean I've been saying for years. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get benevolent help. We've already been getting it, yeah. but not on the level that the world knows, because we haven't asked. But I can tell you straight away, they are not at all interested in babysitting us, no. and no one wants to, and they shouldn't have to. They shouldn't have to. I, I mean, no, because if they they babysit us, they, they we won't learn, and we'll have to go through it again. Well, I don't want to do that. God, no. No. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if we can figure this out. You know, collectively, we're really smart. There's a lot of brilliant people on this planet. You know, everyday people who are just brilliant. And, you know, we can figure this out. And, and once we figured it out, once we figure it out, we got this. We got this. We just got to be committed to each other. You know, we've got to be committed to each other. We've got to put down our weapons against each other. And, you know, we have to dialogue. We have to communicate. And it's not that we're all going to agree on the same thing. And that's okay. Yes. But we yes. have got to stop killing each other. Other star nations, they don't do this. They do not kill each other. No, no. They don't no, do I, I think... Yeah, I think we are one of the rare um, races uh, who just just like to hit on each other and just uh, just fight against each other. And uh, because when well, I mean, there are there are there are beings on this planet that like to kill. Yeah, like to hurt. Yeah, but the majority of us we're, we're really not like that. But you know. When you're being manipulated, it's very easy to manipulate the, our extremes of emotion. Take us from high joy, love, down to the bottom, hate and fear. You know, and they just slam us to the floor and then they just wait to see what we're gonna do. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's exactly what's been happening is they've played us, uh, they've played us like a harp. They get us really up here high, they allow us this, and then they slam us to the ground and they blame, and they point to someone else and say, it's their fault that you're not happy mm. anymore. It's their fault that you don't have this or that. When none of that is true, it's, it's the same fractionalized dialogue to separate and demoralize humanity. So we keep looking at each other. Meanwhile, the manipulators, they're up here collecting all and they're literally laughing at us, planning our destruction. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah it's um we, we 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 people need to really stand up now. It's time. It's time. I mean it's even it's been time since a while now. And uh I mean yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry. What else you want to Well, um, I think I think people are just curious to see how we compare our uh, experiences and our contacts, and because I've been I've been hearing, oh my God, you have the same uh, information and. Um, experiences and uh, well similar similar so uh, we were uh, yes i think is there uh, something beautiful that you said to me uh, the other day you said we are bridges and i love it because bridges not only for the messages that we we carry that we have the, the honor and privilege to carry, but as well bridges between densities, bridges between frequencies. And these, these people we are in contact with, which are on a higher frequency, we are just channeling their energies and their, their beauty and their messages and their voices. And I love the, the concept of the, the bridge. I love the concept of the bridge, it's quite beautiful. Um, and um, well, we need more bridges. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> more bridges. So, for those of you who have had the experience and you're still sitting on the fence, um, you know, a, a lot of the bushwhacking has been done for you. So, uh, as yeah. more and more things open up, I, I think you could feel safe now, maybe yes. coming forward, at least putting a toe or two in the water. Yeah. And, and testing it for yourself because, yeah. uh, you know, humanity is, we're extremely unique and we absolutely are worth fighting for. Yes. And, um, yes. you know, there are a lot of star nations here rooting for us. Yes. Yes. And yes. a lot yes. of, a lot of time, a lot of, uh, manpower and women power has been put into this uh, this mission of Earth. Uh, a lot of resources are here waiting to help. With the expectation that we're going to stand up yes. for ourselves. And uh, I'd be bugger if, if we don't do that. It just yeah. we have to we have to do this. It's time. Yes. It's time. You know the it's thing time. about the thing about being a slave is that you have no control over your life. Yeah. None. Yeah. And I, you know, I know a fair amount of people. And none of them would ever be good slaves. <laughs> never. They would never be good slaves. And uh, I, I think that's true of most of humanity. No one wants to be a slave. And, you know, no one wants to um, be killed just because they're here. I mean, that's just yes. it's insane. So, you know, and at the same time, there's a lot of uh, a lot of change coming. There's a lot of change that's here. Uh, you know, here in the States, there's a great deal of change going on. And there's a, a great deal of speculation on white hats, black hats. Mm. Yeah. That picture is still very, very murky here in the United States in some ways, and certainly in some areas. Uh, and one of the concerns that I have, which I voiced on the last webinar, is that, okay, there's, okay, the, the black hats are done. They're, 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 they're all but done, just clean up. The white hats are in control now. Uh, well, then why are all these bad things happening? Why are 100,000 people coming across the border just in February? Uh, why are, why is the economy being destroyed here in the United States? if the white hats have this, because it's my belief that those who are not awake, they may not ever wake up. They just simply might not. 
But if you go too far with this, if that's even a fact, that the White Hats are in control, if you go too far with this, it may not, you may not be able to, to right the ship because you let it go too far. And, you know, let's face it, um, the Black Hats have had control for a very, very long time. And then again, you know, see, and, and that's just it. Well, who's in control? Who's making the decisions? <laughs> We're all sitting back right now waiting to find out who's making these decisions. <laughs> that's what that's because right? stop and, doing and this. Burning, as the cowboys say, we're burning daylight. So, um, to, mm. you know, and, and the way things are today, especially in social media, you know, if you speak your mind, you got to have a fast horse so you can get away before they come after you. And, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see the white hats running that yet. I, I simply don't see it. Yeah. Um, we as a humanity, we need to move up above the herd. And, you know, that's where we drink the water, above the herd, not behind the herd. Yeah. So I, I don't know why I'm using cowboy analogies all of a sudden, but um, yeah. I think we should, we should no longer just stop and, and wait. I don't think we should keep waiting for, uh, for anyone to save us. I, I think we have to step up. We have yes. to become more active. And, you know, at some point, if humanity moves forward on its own and is demanding the change, then what's really happening and who the real decision makers are, they're going to be forced to show themselves. And then we will know one way or the other who has yes. been calling the shots, whether it's white hats, black hats, off world, underworld, we need to know. Because we're the ones, we're the ones stuck in the middle. We're the ones they're planning on genociding to depopulate. Yeah. And the longer we wait, the less control we have over the situation. Yes. And again, yes. I, I am, I am a prayerful posted person. I pray all the time, but hope is not a real strategy. It's necessary, it. but it's not the, the strategy. It's I mean, it's a state of mind, okay? It's it's good to have it. Uh, it's a state of mind, but it's not the act, the actual action. The actual action is no, to just, no, just to stand, because praying, I, pray, praying. It's you must not do it on your knees. You must request as an equal. You know, we've been told to, to always kneel in front of government, of a religion, of whatever, uh, but that, that's enough. We, we, we can stand for ourselves. We can stand for ourselves. And uh, I think, well, that m my vision is that I have hope for humanity. I, I think because I see this awakening every day, I see people coming together, starting to talk and putting experience and data together and that could never have happened a few years ago. Look at you, you and I have connected other people. We are all connecting suddenly. We are coming together and we are not afraid anymore. Fear doesn't work anymore. And everybody should do the same. Fear, it's an illusion. It's not working if you decide that it's not working. So it, you, you just decide it. And if we keep on doing this, talk to each other, unite, Oh my God, we're gonna make it, don't you think? I don't know. I do. Yeah. We just we have to engage more. More people have to engage in the process instead of sitting back and waiting to see. Um, is the military gonna do this? Is the military not gonna do that? You know, is this gonna happen or is that gonna happen? Yeah. We know what we want to happen. We need. We just need to make it happen. Yes. I mean, after all, it's we, right? This is all about we. That's it. We just have to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have to make it happen. Yeah, so. And stop screwing around. <laughs> <laughs> 
and so yeah. much is at you know, so, so much is at, at stake behind all this because it's not only about us about the even the the, the all the, the humans and the species of this planet it has repercussions in so many different planes and the galaxy as well i th we've we've been told the same message that in what's happening on earth at the moment is involving the future of the galaxy and yes. we we both had the same message and that that that's very important they they are hopeful they are and they are helping and they, they are working a lot our allies but we it's true that when we we put in perspective that of from our awakening uh depends way much more and other species other worlds are depending on it we need to realize suddenly we realize oh that would be a, a bit selfish to to prefer to be coward and because there's so so much from earth and and um, um well we we we've heard the same thing earth the moon and mars something is uh, could be brewing to and become something that would threaten other worlds. But if we awaken and we put a stop to it right now, well, like right yesterday, like that, that's, that, that's not gonna happen. So we are responsible for, no, for, for all of this in a way. And we, we can be the, even the saviors of this galaxy by just deciding to step into our sovereignty, isn't it? What do you think? <laughs> well, we all we all own the conclusion of this, whatever it's going yeah. to be. Yeah. We're all going to own it. So, since we can't get out of that, since we're going to have to own the conclusion of whatever this is, it might as well be the conclusion we want. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why? Why not? engage in this ourselves and not wait so that the outcome is what we want yes we have the power you know, to create this reality the reality we want we do it every day we yes. do it every day you know and we take so many of the little things for granted that we create every day yeah and all we have to do is just dream bigger now you know, just dream bigger. Yes. And then engage. Just go after it. Say that's what we want. Yes. You know, and once you know what you want, you can ask for it. You can yes. intend it. Yes. Yes. I know. I know this is not rocket science. Um, and and you know, none of us want to be a a broken record. But there are so many new people um, discovering all of this for the first time. Their eyes are suddenly just open for the yeah. first time. And, you know, my, my message over the years from the A's has a very specific resonance. And people that resonate to that are attracted to the information. Where your message has a being from the P's you have a very different resonance. We, we're still talking virtually the exact same thing, but it carries a different resonance and you attract a different group of people. Um, and the others who are out there, it, it, and it's likewise, you know, because there we are, we are souls from different star nations that are here having this experience on earth. And, you know, this whole thing about, you know, if you don't get it right this lifetime and you go to hell, so folks, that, that's, that so ain't true. It's just so ain't true. I know. I mean, you know, the creator who can create and generate dimensions and the, the universe therein and all the galaxies and all the life therein, all the different... Uh, ecosystems of each planet and all these different species 
different life forms, different forms of DNA, different body types, all of that. He's going to create a system where you're one and done. Does that make sense to anybody? <laughs> it doesn't. You know, one that's and it. done. That's just no. It's not no. possible. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, that's it. Basically, it's garbage. So, so it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, say so that's. People need to hear this. People need to hear this, and I like as well when you say that we are royalty. And we we do we do we are sovereign. What it, it as well when we say we 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 need to realize we need to be sovereign. We feel as sovereign of ourselves, mm -hmm. reclaim our sovereignties. But we are royalty in so many different levels. Yeah, um, we think that you know just because it's one particular blood type that they're royalty, and of course that's been the conditioning on Earth. When in fact the rest of the universe has a completely different definition of what royalty actually yes. is, you know, yes. and we just don't know that because we have been we we've been in this box, yes, you know, living a life and and on that hamster wheel, you know, with all our might going nowhere because the system's been rigged against us. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, yes. the box has been lit. The, the lid of the box has been opened, and uh, many people are beginning to see the light. It, it's going to be very interesting. Um, you know, the yes. next several years are going to be just remarkable for humanity. I just ask that you pray for humanity, folks, that you be good to yourselves, you be good to each other. And you never stop asking for what you want. Don't let anyone tell you differently. And if they're not awake, be like water. Just go around them and keep moving forward. Keep moving in the direction of what you want. Don't let anybody stop you because they're an idiot. Hopefully they'll wake up one day and they'll figure it out. And if they don't, again, that's on them. They've exercised their free will. They'll start over somewhere else. Um, but, you know, at least at least our galaxy that's watching you know, is, is dependent on what we do. Yeah. You know, yeah. we are... Uh, we're on the news and other star and other star systems. We're on the news. There is a lot of things going on. Uh, if you've if you've listened to my work over the years, I have shared with you how uh, the Andromedan children. Well, they're grown up now, but the, the children that I met, they were learning about our solar system and the history of our planet. They knew it where we didn't. You know, <laughs> we still don't. For the oh, most yeah, well, part, there's huge gaps in what we don't know uh, about our planet and, and about our race. So, uh, yeah, we're on the news. That's exactly that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I love the way you say, like, be Plebeian. like a water. Yeah, yeah. the Plebeian <laughs> News Network. You know. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. And uh, that, that is <laughs> wonderful as well. That. Um, I've learned that the children in the in the Pleiades, the Ahel children, the, the, the blonde race ones, they learn also of the rest about the history of all the worlds and worlds like us. It at the moment they make it as an example, as something that it's like they tell their children that they are lucky to witness this because this is going to teach them about everything they learn. They need to know about evolution so right. that that's very interesting that's very interesting and also yeah. learn what to do because <laughs> i think we've made a mistake in the book here yeah what you not know. to do <laughs> oh my yeah. god yeah so yeah we we need to no choice 
so so that will be that would be yeah your what would be your last words for for the our fellow uh, humans thank you, thank you for this time thank you for inviting me on as a guest and allowing me to to speak some words and um I wish you nothing but great success. And I would just want to say that, you know, for your courage to come forward, I'm, and, and I've told you this already, I'm very proud of you. And for those of you who are also out there beginning to speak, I'm extremely proud of you as well. Um, you know, uh, Earth is a very tough school. And it's not for the squeamish. And you know, when when you leave here, and we've made that ascension into fourth, into fourth, everybody's going to get the T-shirt and the matching sweatshirt that says "I survived Earth in third density." <laughs> and you're going to have to wear those to the to the party. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make and, these. And he knows who you are, so they can come up and pick your brain and and shake your hand and everything else. Um, <laughs> You know, yep. you can't use your, you lose your sense of humor. I mean, uh, there is still plenty to find funny and stupid. There well, really humor, is. Yeah. Humor is a superpower because when you, you can laugh of something, it has no more power on you. Exactly. That's exactly right. You know, yeah, so. and uh, it's just, so, I mean, that's it. You know, just uh, keep, keep the faith, keep charging forward. Um, Never lose faith in yourself. It doesn't matter what other people think. The most important person that you need to be thinking about or listening to would be yourself. Uh, your inner guidance knows. It knows. We just forgot, many of us forgot how to trust it and to listen to it. Uh, Thank you. And pay attention to your dreams now, because uh, a lot of information is coming to people in their dreams. You know, in the Schumann residence, they have just discovered, I think the Russians and the Italians, they have just discovered inside the Schumann residence four, sometimes five octaves of data, information that's been embedded in the Schumann residence. <sighs> the, and this is new. This is new. It wasn't always there when they were measuring the Schumann. Now they've been able to take it apart and they can see these octaves layered inside the human. So we're getting information. Yes. We're getting information. We just have to find a way to get real quiet and, and um, allow ourselves to absorb it. Yes. Byron and uh, you know, I don't have all the answers. No one does. But the more you empower yourself, the less you have to rely on someone else. And right now, I think that's a good thing. I really do. Because we need leaders. You know, you, you, humanity, mankind needs to be a race of leaders, not sheep and slaves. That's going nowhere. That goes nowhere. So, and again, like I said earlier, you're forefathers now, foremothers. That's the role we're in. We have to embrace it. So, yeah. God bless. Thank Blessings to much. all of you. Be safe. Elena, thank you. Thank I'm you, Alex. Me. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you. You are one of those who have opened the ways for disclosure and messages and the, the awakening of the, this, this, this planet. And I really honor your, your courage your work and you're still working hard um i to all those who listen now um please check out there's a link to alex web website under the video um he does webinars uh it's uh, once a week isn't it uh, three times a month, three times a month. well there's two webinars a the q a yeah it's just questions and answers Okay, so you, if you have any questions, please check it out. And it's absolutely uh, uh, amazing. That, that That's great, really, really great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really, I feel really honored to have reconnect with you. You, you are such, a, um, how to say, a wise 
wise man on <laughs> on the, the the path of many people and uh, thank as, you as chief, on behalf... joseph, <laughs> as chief joseph of the nez pierce once said um wisdom comes from experience and experience comes from poor judgment so the more <laughs> mistakes you make <laughs> the more knowledge eventually shows up <laughs> so au revoir take care thank you thank you all right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody.